Okay, so this is my last last riding day in Mexico, and that's a, a little bit of a sad one, you know. But it was actually a really good riding day, actually. Um, as I left uh, um, Ciudad uh, del Carmen, um, there was a fair bit of dirt. There's quite a few dirt dirt roads there. Um, wasn't wasn't that much fun. I thought I actually got lost straight away, basically, um, because I I thought, well, how can it be dirt road? It's just a fine highway here. So I was just looking at how to get out of there because this was all sand as well. But it's actually quite nice because it went pretty much all along the beach. Um, so I had a really good stay uh, there, only stayed a night. Um, but some pretty cool people, and the guy who owned the, the hotel was a really, really cool guy. And uh, he'd done some riding himself in the past, and uh, he'd settled there in Ciudad uh, del Carmen and um, set up you know, quite a nice restaurant and bar. And, Hotel, it was cheap, like $25, $30 a night. I think it was $25 a night. Now, uh, it was off season, of course, so obviously it's a little bit cheaper in the off season. But um, yeah, so this, this today I was heading to uh, Chichamal, uh, which is um, which is basically the last stop before um, entering into police. And I didn't know it at this time, but I, I ended up staying there, I think, four nights. Um, mainly because I just kept going along the, the beach here, so, sort of pretty cool, so I kept going along. Um, uh, mainly because the, the, the hostel that I stayed in, Hostelito uh, Chetomal, was fantastic. I mean, I stayed in a private room, as I've said before, I don't, with all my gear, I don't stay on dorms. Um, it's just not worth it. You'll get away with it probably most of the time, but some of the stories I have heard are from people where they've been uh, screwed over uh, by people in, in hostels. But I stayed in a private room, uh, met some really cool people. Uh, one guy who, who who has a drone and he's traveling all around the world. It's called Our Days on um, on on Instagram, and um, uh, he's, he's, he does amazing footage. Like I wish I had the skills he had, and he and he also has the patience. So he's got a DJI drone. And if you're going to have a drone like that, um, you've got to have patience because you've got to plan. You, you plan your points. I mean, he was showing me how he did it all. It looked once you learned it, I, I'm, I'm sure it, it, it's a lot easier. But it's with anything with drones, it's all about planning. Like I've got a, an Air Dog drone, and I'll review it later on. Um, it was a Kickstarter funded one. I bought it on Amazon, so. I, Whenever you see a Kickstarter campaign and then they promise delivery, and I, like I won't buy technology anymore um, on Kickstarter, only because every single time I've bought any bit of technology that, that promises so much, they end up being six, 12, 18 months late. But if they do, um, if they do uh, advertise on Amazon, usually they advertise way before the date, six, nine months before the date that they're launching. On Amazon, and they and that means that they're fulfilling. They, if they screw that up, they won't get a shop again on Amazon. So they've got to make sure they get it there. So I actually, unfortunately for the guys who backed it, I actually got uh, I got my drone before most of the backers, um, and it hasn't hasn't been without its problems. Um, it was a you know probably the first six months of it, it really just didn't work the way advertised and that it's getting a lot more stable now I lost one of them just one of them just took off on me in the jungles in Puerto Rico and uh, when we were doing some off-roading and they sort of first sort of try to uh, dispel my um, my claims that it was their fault <laughs> um, but then they basically realized that you know there's some of that breakfast that beans I love those beans and rice it's amazing with some chicken there yeah. So I actually stopped twice here today. I had two long stops today. I stopped in, um, I stopped in uh, a couple of little towns along the way. I had a, a nice big breakfast and a and a beautiful lunch. Um, just some street food again. Uh, the, the lunch was more of a little restaurant, but it was just by the side of the road. It just wasn't really a proper full on. But there were lots of locals eating there, so you know it's good. Um, 
Yeah, just getting back to the air dog, um, the guy with the DJI out, the DJI actually bailed uh, air dog out from what, I, what I've heard and uh, the people I've spoken to, where they basically just kept screwing up. That's a little restaurant that I stopped at, really good food. Um, Just for the history and you know, going over some great bridges and stuff like that, always good fun. Um, but uh, yeah, we, this guy really knew his stuff with uh, Air Dog and uh, with his DJI and the footage he showed me of the footage was unbelievable. This waterfall footage he'd, he'd done, I can't remember exactly where he he got it shot. Boy, Jingo's looks fantastic. Um, so he has a real skill, this guy, takes his time. His Instagram account, it's called Our Days. His Instagram account is quite quite fantastic as well. And he's a really good photographer and, you know, he, he loves to travel. He's, him and his girlfriend, they're great people. I can't, again, I can't remember their name. I should, I should have looked it up on Instagram beforehand. But, um, yeah, so, uh, I, uh, you know, I don't like leaving stuff around uh, in hostels, so I always get a private room. And I got a private room in Chenamal and it was um, really, really nice. Uh, just simple, but uh, nice air conditioned. It was so hot there as well, um, but it was air conditioned. And then, you know, once I got there, it had really good Wi-Fi. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna stay here for a few days and do some work. And um, <laughs> because I was still able to do the work all on my travels, but unfortunately, um, you know, it took me twice as long to do everything, three times as long, just because you'll see this in a lot of people selling stuff. Everyone's nice and friendly, they're not pushy. Um, on the side of the road, water, fruit, vegetables, things like that. Sometimes some hot food. Um, always be nice to them. These people are trying to graft out a living and it's obviously not that easy. Um, I don't think anyone ever really pushed me too hard. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, so I was able. It took me. To, it was always take me too long to get work done. You know, just simple things. You know, just waiting for pages to load, and you know. So my nights, I wasn't getting anywhere near enough sleep because I was working probably five or six hours every um, every other day. Uh, you know, I have, I've got my assistants and stuff like that that do uh, helping me do work, but it's not the same as just getting in there and doing it yourself and. Uh, and unfortunately, I got really good Wi-Fi and I was able to get a whole heap of stuff done um, over the four days. And all, you know, like I'd leave in the mornings, I'd head out and do some touring. And, and around Chetamal, there's a lot of Mayan ruins. Like there's maybe five or six places you can visit that are fantastic. I didn't go north um, where I could have gone a three or four hour drive and had a look at the ruins there, but it was you know, very touristy and I, I wanted to look, you know, I stuck around, there's a couple of singing out there. Um, that was actually a checkpoint, you slow you go. Usually the checkpoints, they'll have those cones out, out front in Mexico anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I um, so I basically, I, I stayed there, what was it, four nights, went to a few of the ruins, a um, few of the smaller ones, and they were pretty and, you know, fairly, fairly, uh, fairly small but they were also you know a lot of, lot of history there and um, and they've done quite a nice job of, uh, of decking them out and making them look good um, you know the you know, very very na nature orientated a few of them were off-road which was a good bit of fun especially there was no one around so I could sort of have a bit of fun and give, give it the beans a little bit you know with my, with my big bike I don't I don't tend to go too crazy like you know uh, some of the guys I've met along the way that had dirt bikes. I mean, you can have so much fun with them. A big bike, you lose control. Um, it's pretty much all over. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I err on the side of safety with, with that sort of stuff. It's a long trip and for a little bit of excitement, you don't want to go too crazy. Um, yeah, a lot. I saw a lot of. I saw a lot more people on bike on bicycles, uh, riding bicycles. I, you know, you take your hat off to them. And, yeah, I mean, that's ten times crazier than riding a motorbike. But they get to see a lot more, and 
they probably stop a hell of a lot more. They don't get anywhere. Um, a couple of times I was riding, I was thinking, I wonder where they'll be staying tonight. I mean, they're you know, 100 miles from anywhere. Um, but this is the sort of adventure riding I love when you're going on a trap, you're traveling, and in Europe would be just similar to this, where you're just going through beautiful city after beautiful city. But having, I love the highways that are stuck on the old ways. You'll, you'll find that a lot of the modern countries, basically all the highways pass, bypass all the towns, and it's really unfortunate. It means the death of the towns in a lot of cases as well. Um, but I love these little highways, or this is Route 160, I think, and uh, goes through all the towns, and it just makes it so much more fun. And so much more enjoyable, because just clocking out Ks every day is no fun. Um, this sort of town is fairly large. You'll find with the smaller towns as you enter them, there'll be a lot more people selling stuff on the side of the roads and stuff like that. I thought I might have actually done a U and gone back and got fuel there, but I don't think I, it doesn't look like I did. Um, but uh, yeah, this is I, this actual road is where I actually got I got nutted by a bloody um, a four wheel drive came past me. See, see my visors up. You know, I usually turn my head to the right when a car comes past, and this time I, I sort of did a little bit, but this rock just came up from this four-wheel drive and just whacked me right on the lip, split my lip open, hit my hit my tooth and broke it back up, broke back up my tooth. So not the smartest thing to have the visor up. Um, it's okay when you're you know you you're cruising like this. There's not many cars, but I did, I should have turned my head. It would have hit me probably on the cheek, maybe around the ear. Oh, actually, I would have been protected there, but a bit of a dumb move for myself. Um, but it looked nice and clean, the road, and I thought I was, I was fine, you know. Um, so there's a bit of, bit, of, a bit of this road, maybe about 30, 40 kilometers of this road was unpaved. Um, it looked like it was getting some work done on it at some stage, I don't know. Um, you've got to, you'll find that any time there's road works, it, it can be a little bit tough because they, um, they don't exactly treat the road that well, and you know they're usually doing work on it, so you end up having, you know, it, it, it gets fairly thick in places, and that's not that much fun, you know. Um, it, it's hard riding in thick, thick ripio or thick crushed rock, um, and you know I wouldn't want to ride in some of the places I went to. I wouldn't want to ride in when it was wet either. So, um, but um, Chenemul is a is a little port city. Um, it's actually quite pretty. They've got some really nice little places. The, the, the main main square is not on the water. Um, it's uh, you, it's off the water, um, and that's where all the shops are. But again, the, the, these shops in some of these towns just I mean they just sell a lot of plasticky crap, and uh, I don't know who buys it. A lot of fashion stores, but there was you know there were, I had street food every night there. Except there's a there was one restaurant where I met a guy, and you'll see a picture of him later, but met a guy and uh, another a, a guy, adventure rider from Mexico, and uh, La Paz, and uh, he's a really cool guy, his name was Mike, and uh, we had lunch together and we caught up with each other a couple of times, so he was a really, really cool guy. Uh, and we've stayed in touch ever since too, you know, he's really supportive and, uh, you know, let me know any time I had any problems, who to call, you know, you know, all that sort of stuff. So here we had about 30 k's of this. Most of it was fine, but some of it was a little bit rough. Um, where, the, where, where all the, the workers were around those areas. This sort of stuff here is pretty hard packed. I'm only doing about 30, 40 k an hour here, just cruising. I was wondering what this guy was up to up here, but um, I think I got waves through here anyway. No, he's asking me to stop. Yeah. <laughs> You get a bit. I mean, one in one uh, later in the trip had a guy like this, and I was waiting there for like 45 minutes. You know, uh, not exactly fun. And then, I, then I got on the bike and kept going, and I was thinking, like, the road is so wide, you could have easily had two, two, two or three cars going through. That was that was a bit of a smart ass move from that four-wheel drive overtaking me as he's waving thing people through. But you know, you get there. So anytime, when you're on the dirt, if anyone gets in front of you, just let them get fair, a fair way up in front of you because it's just not worth it, getting the stains kicked in your face and dust and all that sort of stuff. So I always just let them get a fair way in front of me. Unless they're going slower than what I want to go, then I just take them. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that, that, this, these sort of areas, 
little bit, little bit rough, you know, when it's really loose. Um, you just got to be a little bit more careful. But yeah, so I stayed like four nights in Chenimal and um, the hostel that I stayed at had a swimming pool and it was so hot in that town that the three or four days I was there, it was just steaming hot every day. And I, um, they had a nice little swimming pool, so I just, I could just coming home, I'd just jump in the pool, um, soak myself and then uh, get back up, go back and do some work and I'd drop down, drop down a few times again and, and uh, jump in the pool. It had, up, it had a little upper deck that had a little barbecue, it had all these seating areas. And I was there during the, the, uh, the Day of the Dead as well, so there was a little bit of a festival going on there with some fireworks. A bit, a bit, it was a bit, uh, a bit lame, you know, it wasn't a big city. Um, and, um, and had some hammocks and a you know, kitchen upstairs that was open, uh, open, uh, open area. Um, had, it, was, it was a really cool place, good Wi-Fi, and the bedrooms were really nice, they cleaned them each day. Uh, staff were really friendly. And helpful. My bike was parked right out the front, so and it was 24 hours they were open, so I didn't have any problems with that. I covered the bike at night. Um, that's another thing. What you want to do for your bike, if, if you've got a nice, it doesn't even matter if you've got a nice bike actually. Just get the lightest, smallest cover you can you can find. You don't need anything big because it takes up a lot of room. A big thick cover will take up a huge amount of room in your. Uh, uh, in your gear and you just want to get the lightest ones just so you can cover it up so that people just don't see what brand or make or model it is. Um, as I got further south, I, once I got to Santiago, I even sent my cover back. I thought, well, you know, it's just extra stuff and I was going to do a lot of off-roading and I was just trying to lighten the load on everything and uh, had to make some, you know, I basically, even the little batteries, I thought, well, I can do with just two batteries for this and two batteries for that instead of having all the backup. Um, and, you know, just try to get, get the load as light as I possibly could. Which wasn't perfect, but at the same time, I was able to get, probably put it, get, to get another 15 kilos off, it, um, off the bike. Uh, I mean, the couple of times I camped too, when it was cold, I was, I was a little bit cold in the tent, but I just got rid of the, the, the I had um, like a, a liner, like a little sort of blanket to, to go over the uh, sleeping bag and I ditched that. The sleeping bag was fine, but I mean, it got a little bit cold, especially because I'd like to, I don't like, I get hot very quickly. So I usually get out of my sleeping bag when it's when I'm a bit warm and then, then I get cold and have to go back in it, you know. Um, yeah, so you'll find that most of Central America, unless you're gonna go and do a lot of off-roading, which would mean it's gonna take you a lot longer to, to, to complete the journey. Unless you're gonna do a lot of off-roading, you'll find that most of the time the roads are pretty good. You can't help it, there's off-roading. You'll go off-roading just because the highways, you know, don't, aren't, aren't paved. But um, I didn't do that much stuff in Central America off-road. Especially too, because I was planning on leaving. Um, I, I, I'd already I booked a, a boat for early December, and then that got cancelled. So then I had to get onto another boat, which is called the Star Rat. It's a German boat, fantastic experience. Uh, quite expensive, about twelve hundred dollars with the bike to get from uh, Panama to Cartagena. Um, but I found out I. I I got put on the reserve list and then two days later, once I was on the reserve list, they said, okay, we're leaving on the 23rd, I think it was in November. So basically that meant that I had 20 something days in, 23 days in Central America, which basically meant I had to skip a fair bit because otherwise I wasn't going to be able to get my bike across until January. Um, and that was not going to work. That was going to put me another month, month and a half behind and I couldn't afford to do that. Um, you know, so it, all those little things add up to, to a lot of people not completing the trip. So you'll find a lot of people have, um, have you know, have this idea from going, I mean, they went to go from Alaska to to the bottom of, um, of Patagonia, uh, that bottom of South America, and, you know, only a handful out of every hundred will end up making, um, you know, maybe a couple of handfuls, but uh, maybe 10 or whatever make it. And that's not only, not not because they can't do it, it's just that they run out of time, they run out of money, because all these little, all these major parts, which is the crossing from Panama to Cartagena to Colombia, um, any of the major parts of the trip, you have to be ready for, and you, you, you've got to plan for. 
The rest of it, I didn't really plan for it much. But just that one thing, it could have put me back a long time. And, and then it would have also meant that flying my motorbike from uh, Panama, if I ended up flying the bike, I would have had to go to Medellin not to, or Bogota, not to Cartagena. So I would have missed three quarters of Colombia as well. So And then I had to, would have had to do a whole heap of paperwork and... And everyone who's done that, I think, has had a bit of a nightmare of a, a, an experience with it. So the best way, the best way to cross from um, from Central America to South America by by Colombia is through the Star route. It's basically the ship and the service is pretty much for boat, motorbikers, and uh, and bicyclists. You know, so I always suggest you plan you plan to book that you know months in advance, and it's usually full. And I was lucky to get on. One guy didn't make it, who who was booked on the boat, so was, we were one less. And, and one of the guys just getting from Panama to the boat, which is about a three-hour ride, um, he nearly well, he, we loaded the boat, and he still hadn't got there, and he'd left with us, but he got lost. He, you know, the guys were riding a fair bit fast. We had this German guy with us who was, who was pretty crazy, and I sort of tried to keep up with him. But I didn't know that Eric, this other guy, Eric, who's now in Africa. Um, was, uh, I mean, Eric just takes his time, he just wasn't bothered, but he ended up getting lost at probably about two, two hours late, and the, we'd already loaded the boat, the boat had already taken off, but they ended up putting his bike in a small boat, taking it out there and then loading it, I think they did it that way. Um, so he ended up being fine, but maybe another hour later he would have, he would have missed it. And it wasn't an easy place to, that's another thing, if you're going to get the Star Wrap, uh, which is a German boat from Panama to Colombia uh, to Cartagena. I suggest that you meet up with a whole heap of other guys who are doing it. It's easy to do that. He sends a e group email out to all the riders. Just have a, pl a meeting point because it is a really difficult place to find, and there's and there's no roads marked on the map, so uh, it's very easy to get lost. If you know your Spanish, you'll get directions, and it was a pretty treacherous road too. I, I actually had um, I. I in, in the Honduras border, on the Honduras side of the El Salvador border, I had also uh, Nicaragua border. Sorry, um, I had I had two punk, uh, two ring punctures. I just went through a huge ditch and uh, come off my bike and and uh, and so I was losing air on my front tyre. And I've just I've just got a quote to get that fixed now. It's the front to, to, to replace the front rim is about twelve hundred dollars. Thank you very much. So Honduras, thank you. Uh, sorry, yeah, Honduras. Um, thank you very much for the worst bit of. I mean, it, basically, what they do is they cut the road open, and then they just put a water bottle there. And it was around a corner, and I just went into a ditch, and then that was it. Um, off I came, and uh, it was about probably pretty close to a foot deep. You know, 12, 10, 10 inches deep, and cut hard on each side, and about a metre long. So, and you know, you're hitting it at 60, 70, 60, 50 kilometers an hour, or whatever I hit at 40 kilometers an hour, it doesn't matter, you're coming off that bike. Uh, because the bike just lifted me up as I went through it. I tried to hold on, but no. The bike ended up just going straight ahead and just landed in the ditch and was still upright. I was on my friggin' ass. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, you'll, you'll find that a lot where they're repairing a road and all they'll do is put a little cone there or a water bottle so that it, to, to let you know there's a hole there. Um, or sometimes even a rock, which I have no idea how that makes any sense whatsoever. So yeah, you'll see Pem these gas stations, Pemex, all the way throughout Mexico. They're the ones I stuck to. And they have like 93, I think, maybe even 98. I should see if I can see, no, I can see. Uh, 98 in, in, on the gas. But, uh, that, so they have, uh, you know, there's pretty good gas stations. So you give, give, I just, if it was, $20, um, you know, $20 US converted, uh, I'd just give the, you know, it was like $18, I'd just give them $20 and let him keep the change. A few other guys I listen to sort of get their money, I, I just think that's a bit rude. Um, because most of those guys don't make a huge amount of money. Um, and as I found out in the past, a lot of them, that's the only money they make is tips or extras, you know. So. Um, one of the guys I listened to said, oh, you know, even if it's $20 and 20 cents, so I'll just give them $20. And I'm thinking, um, but yeah, so um, I, I think that, you know, now knowing that this is the end of my journey, I still, I still, still did a little couple of little, little trips 
here and there, um, and I'll put the maps for those uh, down uh, on the on the on my website. You'll see the Reva maps. And I, if I haven't met, if you haven't heard of Reva before, R E V E R dot C O, they 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 they've got a motorcycle app. It's fantastic. It costs you, it's a premium app. I think it costs about fifty or a hundred dollars a year, but it maps every single. Uh, trip you do on your motorbike including elevation average speed you can't you can't like I never paused it so I just kept it running so when I stopped I kept it running because it, the couple of times that I did decide to pause it, I forgot to restart it again and that just ruins it so you just leave it running hopefully they'll get something in place they might even have it now it's been a few updates since I got back uh, where when you pause it'll order auto pause for you so it knows when you've stopped and I think they have that new feature now um, and then when you get going, it starts again, and that will be so much better. Um, but it's a great app, and, and each one of them, you can embed the map in any uh, blog. Uh, you can share them on Facebook, etc. So um, I highly recommend it for a long journey. It's great to be able to look at the, see what 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 uh, what roads you took, and all that sort of stuff. And there's a few of them where you'll see that um, I've gone up one road and then found it's a dead end, or because some of the some of the off-road roads are actually to go through private properties and they lock the gates on the road they obviously keep the cattle in but they sh you would think they just shut the gates and then you can open them and go through but some of them had locks on them, which is just <laughs> beggars belief but uh, you know I think the longest I had to wait was an hour or so most of the time there's someone there in 10 minutes or someone around or someone who could see you so yeah so yeah on the, the the, there's a big national park you go through on the way to Cheddarville as well, which is pretty cool. Um, not a lot of trees, but uh, uh, that's where the, uh, this is where all the uh, coming up around here is where all the the ruins are, um, and they're pretty well promoted. And the roads there are dirt roads to get to them, and most of them, and uh, you know, they're sometimes they're like 10, 15 k's away, five, 10 miles. So it's not that big a big an issue, and um, uh, and it's well worth those, those little side trips to go if you go for a walk around. I usually stay only about an hour and then get going again. Um, but you always meet different people on the road. There's not many adventure riders out this way. I think I was the only one in, in the four days, the only one I saw in Chenamal, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, but I'll be writing about that in the next video where I'll talk about the border crossing from Chenamal into Belize. Um, and, uh, and have some te uh, some data there for if you if you need to know what to expect at the border crossing. I mean, with Mexico, and depending on the bike size and and, and year model, you pay insurance. So you, with your vehicle import permit, you pay like I paid four hundred US dollars and I got that four hundred dollars back when I when I exited when I exited Mexico. Um, and you know, if you go through Mexico, you can very easily forget about doing that. You know, then you basically lost your four hundred bucks, um, or three hundred. I think the minimum is three hundred, but you get it all back at the end. It's to it's to discourage people from selling their bikes, um, from you know, bring bring cheap bikes in, or from other countries and stuff. That I suppose yeah, all a bit silly from to me, but yeah. But a lot of these little towns, uh, again, those topes that you've got to go over the little speed humps. They're, they vary in size, and they are everywhere. And you'll find that you'll find them in places where you just don't expect a tope. Sometimes they've got them coming into a big turn where they actually have a tope just all out of the blue. Most of the time, there's some signage, but sometimes there's nothing and you, no warning. And I probably went over two, two or three on my whole trip that I went over at you know, 60 mile an hour, 100 kilometers an hour. Not something you want to do, <laughs> guarantee it. Uh, one of them I nearly lost a big time. Um, and we got, got a little bit airborne and then sort of panicked a little bit towards the end of it. Um, I think this is now where I'm coming into Chetamon now. Um, it's quite a, it's a reasonably sized, sized uh, town. It's got a waterfront drive and on the waterfront drive there's a restaurant scattered from here, uh, here and there on the, on the drive there. Um, but most of the stuff is in town, like they have the, there's one thing I really hate, the one part of the Mexican food I, I dislike is I, I actually like the sausages and they make some really nice sausages and they put cheese on, which I'm not a big fan of, of anyway. But then they put this 
this processed meat on top of it as well, which is just disgusting because it ruins the whole thing, but obviously popular where, uh, where they are. But um, really just ruins the taste of the whole kind of thing, you know. Um, so whenever I, whenever I use that, whenever I bought one of those, I just had to open it up and get rid of all the freaking processed meat off it. Just have those sausage. You know, in Australia we have, like if we had a barbecue, it would be chops, uh, chops like uh, lamb chops, or you uh, usually lamb chops with sausages, and you just have a piece of bread that's buttered, lightly buttered, and put some tomato sauce in it and chew away. That's that's what a sausage is, you know. And, you know, like when you're a kid growing up, you have when you're playing football or cricket, you know, uh, they'll have little sausage sizzles and you know a dollar a sausage and stuff like that. Fantastic! It just tastes so nice, you know. Nicely buttered bread. So yeah, this is coming into channel now because I've got the um, I've got the uh, the bridge coming up. So this is just a little drive on my, around when I got got into Chittimal. I had a, I had some time before I was checking in, and um, I uh, I had a look around the town, and uh, there's going to be some photos of some of the people that I met as well. It's quite pretty. Uh, to the right is I mean Belize is only a few kilometres away. To the right. So I went, yeah, I went along the water side and had a look around there and, and went to a couple of little uh, of the ruins over the, over the few days that I was there. I think it's even got a Walmart or something similar there, um, just outside. I think it is a Walmart actually. The one thing is a little bit annoying is some of the supermarkets won't let you in with a backpack. You have to leave it with them. And I've, in my backpack, I have my uh, some extra cash and I have my um, my uh, passport and all this stuff and there's no just zero chance I'm ever leaving that with anyone uh, there you know so I just walk back out again if they say or I just pretend that I don't understand what they're saying so this is the this is the place that I started look at that there's hammocks tables that's all my gear hanging up um, there was there's only a couple of people staying there each night I was there I was staying in the dorms downstairs so there's a little kitchen area under cover there's a swimming pool downstairs really pretty hey and this is in a, like a bit of a concrete jungle, you know. So that's outside of it. It's not that. Uh, it's not that pretty, you know. The town is not that pretty. So if that's quite nice, the waterfront there. Um, a fisherman. It's just some uh, what you get here for your breakfast and if you, you know, stuff like that. That's just a little uh, open area there, just near the main mall. I've got no idea what that is. I can't even remember taking that photo. Um, some of the housing in the town, all pretty basic, but some of them were pretty nice houses you could really do nicely with, you know, if you did them up. But, but that's where the, this, this place is pretty cyclone. Um, yeah, they get quite a few cyclones in this area too, so probably not the greatest place to to uh, invest in a property. Um, lighthouse, a lot of fishing in the in the area. Um, so the, the seafood's really, really nice. That's, a, that's going along the waterfront drive. That's one of the restaurants along the waterfront. I didn't go to that one. Um, I'll show you one in a minute that was my favourite that I went to. It has this great soup. God, I, I love that soup with the with the seafood in it. Just so delicious. Um, again, that's the waterfront. There's a little waterfront area, people sitting around and just relaxing. So I, I spent a few days here just taking my time with everything and just, you know, working working at nights and because um, I don't really usually go out at night so, so I usually do my work at night during the day I go have a look around um, so afternoon I get back and do some work and that's that that's the restaurant I went to a few times a really cool good little spot and that was that was the I had that nearly every day that thing <laughs> it was so amazing that's the restaurant there on the corner really cool little place not, not ridiculously cheap or anything like that but just really cool and I met a guy, Mike, there. This is just going to one of the ruins. That's the sort of road you'll see when you go to the ruins. Bit of dirt, no cars around, have a bit of fun. Um, that's Mike, he's a really cool guy. You can see his bike there. He, he's been pretty much everywhere. This guy, he, he knows his stuff pretty well. And he kept me, you know, he gave me contacts all the way along you know, to, to chat with, to stay with if I needed to. And stuff like that, I really like the guy. Bit of a rough head, but oh, I like that sort of guy really good character and uh, he likes getting out about that's again one of the, the trips that I little side trips I took 
and uh, yeah, some more ruins just going through some towns. All really cool. I love that sort of stuff. You know, um, uh, yeah, it's a really pretty place. A little bit windy. It would have been beautiful without. And there's Mike and yeah. So anyway, that's uh, 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 down to Carmen to Chinamule. Again, guys, any questions or comments, leave them below. We'll we'll, go, we'll chat again soon.